Hot on the heels of relinquishing their self-driving car division, Uber will soon be closing a deal with Joby Aviation to sell off Elevate, the company responsible for Uber's much-anticipated air taxi service. Does this mean your dreams of zipping across the city above red lights and traffic jams are over? Not in the slightest. In fact, they may be much closer than you realize. Uber sold Elevate to Joby Aviation, a company in the business of electric flight innovation whose previous partners include NASA and the United States Air Force, and has garnered the attention of JetBlue, Intel, Toyota, and other investment divisions. The deal follows a year-long partnership between Elevate and Joby, who aims to deliver a functional zero-emission air taxi service operational and available to consumers by 2023 that is fast, quiet, and affordable. That's not just big talk either. They've had working prototypes since 2019. Joby's current all-electric aircraft is capable of holding five people, including a pilot, and covers about 150 miles on a single charge. According to Uber's calculations, the aircraft could be able to cover the same distance as a two-hour-long drive in about 15 minutes, making moving between major cities such as Orlando and Tampa or San Francisco and San Jose as time-consuming as a coffee break. Uber didn't just walk away from Elevate full stop. The sale to Joby is just the first step in a $75 million investment plan from Uber, which both companies say is the beginning of a long-term partnership though the exact terms remain behind closed doors. Uber CEO Dara Kahosro-Shahi has referred to the sale as a process to deepen our partnership with Joby Aviation. Joby soon after announced its plans to integrate Elevate services into the Uber app. Elevate is not the only iron Uber has in the flying car fire. The unconventional taxi company has been working for years with five other aerospace engineering companies to make soaring above rush hour a reality, according to a 2018 press release. Those companies are Jaunt, Embraer, Pipistrel, Karam Aircraft, Aurora Flight Sciences, and Bell. So while it may look like Uber is giving up on the Sky Taxi, the reality is it's only a matter of time before you're hailing a taxi straight out of Blade Runner. Uber Elevate was unveiled in 2018 with the aim of revolutionizing short-distance travel within highly congested metro areas and supposedly will function a bit more like bus stops than modern-day Uber. Uber and their partners currently have set their sights on transporting passengers to and from specific points, called vertiports, which will act as hangars for Uber's partner aircraft. At launch, it's likely that these vertiports will mainly transport people to and from airports, much like Uber's current helicopter service, Uber Air, which functions exclusively as a way for people to skip the traffic on their way to New York's JFK airport. So, bad news, you won't be able to have your Uber pilot drop you off at your friend's rooftop party for the foreseeable future. Another hurdle to the objectively cool flying car dream is proving to be proper procedures. The Federal Aviation Administration has cautioned Uber and other air taxi services to be patient and careful with how they proceed. In 2019, acting FAA Chief Dan Elwell warned a crowd at Uber's Elevate conference it often took up to 12 years to certify an aircraft. At the time, that was longer than Joby Aviation had been a company. Silicon Valley has always aimed high, but we would not be surprised if the 2023 deadline was foiled by having to go through proper channels. As of the time of this recording, Joby, Elevate, and Uber have never certified an aircraft with the FAA. Cities like Los Angeles, Orlando, Dallas, and Melbourne, Australia have been selected for the initial rollout of Uber Elevate. In order to get ready for a functional launch, the cities will need to build out the infrastructure Elevate relies on, specifically the vertiports and a sophisticated air traffic control system. Dallas was the first to agree in 2017, and initial renders show a vertiport situated on top of a parking garage. Uber is far from the only company looking to shake up commuter traffic. Airbus, Hyundai, Toyota, and Boeing have all thrown their hats in the ring. 
supporting a variety of different startups like Lilium, who has developed a five-seater flying taxi that can climb to a whopping 5,000-foot elevation, outpacing Joby Aviation's 2,000-foot elevation max. Lilium also boasts a five-seat interior and can last a whole hour on a charge, though it is slightly slower than Joby's flying car at 186 miles an hour. It certainly seems like air taxis are just around the corner, and as is the case with all new technologies, they bring their own subset of ethical quandaries. The most obvious question that comes up once you picture yourself cruising effortlessly through the sky above the 5 o'clock rush is how much the service will cost. Uber Air, the aforementioned helicopter service, comes in at over $200 per ride. There's nothing to suggest Uber Elevate will be any more affordable other than vague statements from those involved. Considering this angle conjures an image of being stuck in the same old traffic jams while your city's rich and powerful zip from rooftop to rooftop in style and convenience. All in all, far less appealing. If the air ride sharing is too expensive, the whole endeavor could prove dead on arrival. Hopefully, Uber can provide some solid details on pricing and availability as the project reaches its 2023 deadline. There's also a multitude of questions surrounding safety, privacy, and protection of the environment. By all accounts, air taxis will be flying much lower than commercial airlines, raising privacy concerns for those who have no say as to whether or not they are below the taxi's flight path. As for safety, due to their low altitude, air taxis will have to contend with bird strikes and even consumer drones. Flying that low is sure to scare more birds than higher up flights, perhaps even driving them away from certain areas. Are we willing to let unproven tech change our ecology for a service most people will be financially barred from using? Currently, private drones cannot be flown within two miles of any airport in the US. Will this rule extend to the new vertiports? In the coming years, we may have to grapple with the consumer drone versus air taxi debate as one private industry tries to marginalize the other. Accidental strike fears don't end at birds and drones. What about other air taxis? Joby CEO Joe Ben Burvitt says he envisions air taxis filling the skies above cities. Well, if that dream is fulfilled, it is a very near certainty that there will be in-air accidents from time to time. Different flying car models have different safety features, such as backup engines and parachutes, but that doesn't mitigate the fact that a potentially crashing air taxi will most likely have to come to a stop in a heavy populated city. When the inevitable does occur, who takes the blame? Uber is notoriously slippery when it comes to liability for damages. This works for the company because Uber drivers are technically contractors, not Uber employees. As the law stands currently, if you're injured while in an Uber, the company Uber takes zero accountability. Instead, the driver who caused the accident is liable. Will these laws stay the same for Uber's upcoming aircraft fleet? With Uber's relinquishment of Elevate, we may be seeing its contractors instead of employees business model take to the skies, meaning that potential damages will fall under the responsibility of individual pilots or manufacturing partners, but never Uber. Taking into account one could argue Uber's air taxi is dangerous and invasive, especially considering the near future traffic solutions which will in theory be more useful and accessible to everyday people like the California Hyperloop or Elon Musk's boring company tunnels. Each has its own set of problems, but when looking at the big picture, Hyperloops and highway tunnels are tried and true transportation methods that don't require a major shift in legal policy to accommodate fairly. Still, a future featuring flying cars seems nearly inevitable at this point, and there's every chance that they could turn into the new normal for those who can afford them. It's very possible we could soon be living in cities which offer airlift services at the press of a button. Casual air travel is a feat pedestrians and engineers alike have dreamed of since the first man-powered flights, and it certainly looks like it could be achieved very, very soon.